So here's our, our bell rope so far. Whip crackers, whip makers, cracker twist, Matthew Walker knot, alternate strands, senate, two wall knots, followed by a Matthew Walker knot. What we're going to do to put a, a stopper knot on the end, it's called a stopper knot, is to tie a man rope knot. It's tied by making a wall knot to start with. Each strand is twisted under the previous strand. It's important you go under. As you'll notice that a lot of these, the difference really is a variation of whether you're going over or under the, string, the uh, rope that's next to it. And you end up with this square pattern like so. Okay, I'll keep this a nice open weave so you can see clearly what we're doing. You can actually pull it in tighter, but this actually makes it quite easy to work with. The next step is to take each strand and lay it in the, what I'd call the channel along here, okay, of the next one. So you lay it over that one, okay, then you do that over that one, and over that one, and then this one would go over like that, except that to complete the sequence, we have to go under this first one, okay. Try and keep my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on there. That goes underneath that one there. And then what you have when you put, tighten it up a little bit, the rope that I'm using has got a bit of stiffness about it, which means that you can do this quite easily. Okay. So there's the first part of your, math, uh, of your man rope knot. The next part, and this it really involves uh, learning the construction of this knot. It's really very easy, but it takes a while till you actually recognise when you're getting it right. I'm going to take the strand, I start with the strand on the left because we're going to bring it round to the right. What we do is it follows this loop, it goes under this, this one, whatever strand you're working on goes underneath that strand, follows this string up, lays beside it, and then it goes down directly after. You can see the, this string here. It's actually where this second string that you've gone under to start with, where it originates from the center. Okay, so to see that, that comes up through there, right beside it. And then it's got to go down, it goes over two, over this one, over this one, down there. Okay? That's what you have. If you turn it 90 degrees clockwise, you're then picking up the same one on the left, coming underneath this one, follow it straight up, and then there's actually three here that it goes over. The previous one that we just tied, the one that we were expecting that we had the first time, and the place where the string that we went under originates. Okay, and that goes down through there. All right, the next one. This one could be a little tricky because we're only going underneath the one that's next to it, which actually means we're going over the first one that we tied through. So we take the one on the left, bring it under follows that loop or bite, goes over the one that we tied previously, plus the two ropes, and the, we go down just after where this one originates, just down there. And the very last one, we turn through 90 degrees, so we're always looking at the same pattern, comes around, it's actually going over this because that's one of the ones that we tied earlier, follows that adjacent neighbour up and you'll start to recognise hopefully the pattern by this stage it goes over, well there's really the three but there's the two that are on top there's the origin of the one that was obviously there and down there Okay, that's a man rope knot and all that remains is for that to be tightened up a little bit, quite a nice pattern and it looks a lot like a Turk's head or a, um, a prolong knot 
many variations for it, like for this, particularly for doing the bell ropes. This will bring the ends out on this side. Yep. If you want to bring them out through the end, hopefully you can see that down there. If you bring the working end up through the next hole that's available, then when it's tightened, they'll all pull into a, a neat little bundle ready for you to tie another. Uh, bell rope's nearly done, and uh, what we need to do is tension it. So again, with the finger in the middle, pulling gently on each of the ends. Don't pull too much slack through at any one time. Okay, and this is just to take out what's most easily removed as far as slack goes. Looks like a bit of a mess, but then what we have to do is work each one individually. Now the second rope on each of these, if I pull on this one, that's the best one to tighten up, okay? Because if I pull out this one here, and then I go one step back, you'll see that tension, that takes that tension out. Pulling on this one here, takes out the tension there. Pulling that one there, Ah, that loop disappeared. That was looking a bit ugly, a bit messy. There we go. Pulling on this outer bite, and the next one along. Obviously this changes if you use working with more strands, but the process is exactly the same. You find the pair that work together, and uh, just work your way along until you actually have a knot that's nice and neatly tensioned. You should have a nice square or diamond pattern in the top and on the sides it should look like something like a uh, what you'd expect to see of a, uh, a two lead four white turks head. So a little bit of tension on each of those. It starts to pull tight. I use often use this knot to, to tie in a marble in the middle of that before it's tension or as you're tightening it up you can pop a marble in there and that'll actually hold that marble in quite nicely. As you can see here's our man rope knot sitting basically over the top of the Matthew Walker knot that was tied there previously. The simplest way to finish this off is to actually cut them short, singe the ends with a lighter, be careful if you're going to roll them in your fingers, and then tuck them somewhere inside this knot and the next thing I'll show you the finished product.